Okay, I'll take that as a let's jump right into it. Okay, so it's the weekly Sumo platform meeting. Hello, I'm Michael, I'm the content manager. I see uh, Kadir, who's the product manager, and Madalena, community manager, and Ricky, one of the Sumo devs, and Ebuy, manager of the product, cross product platform team, whatever we're called, I can't ever remember. Okay, so. I don't I didn't remember either, so it's fine. <laughs> So uh, the first thing I see there, okay, so here's the thing. There's this, uh, the first item is about hot threads. So a couple of weeks ago, I wasn't going to be at the meeting, but I put this agenda item about hot threads, about coming up with a criteria by which we would add a thread to the hot topics list on the product uh, landing page. And looking back at the meeting videos and notes, it seems like the people in the meeting said, hey, we should talk about this in the contributor forum. But that then, the conversation never actually happened in the contributor forum. And on second thought, as I look at it again, I think maybe that conversation is premature. So my proposal is um, we should figure out actually if um, adding those to the product page is helpful or not and we're already trying to figure out what's helpful or not helpful at of uh, things on the product page so this should just be one of the things we're trying to figure out if it's helpful or not to add to the product page um, and then we'll know whether we actually want to do it or not and if so then let's have a conversation about criteria for adding them yep i think that is a good idea uh we really need to figure out if uh hot topics at that I mean, the placement of hot topics and whether they should be on the product landing page or maybe on the topic landing pages or anywhere, um, whether that's even helpful or not. And then we can, like you said, then we can decide about the criteria. Yeah. Anybody else thoughts? Okay. I agree. Let's just start yeah. a discussion then. No, or hold off on the discussion. Yeah, that's already good. No, no, no. Yeah. I mean, our discussion about deciding if it, this makes sense or not. Oh, right, right, right. Okay. <laughs> so so I the, can the already... first discussion, not the second. Yeah, sorry, right. go ahead. Uh, well, actually, I can say I was hoping to have a report uh, today uh, on findings already that we could base this discussion on. Um, unfortunately, the latest results I have are kind of inconclusive. Uh, so I don't want to uh, present uh, pr uh, those results just yet. Just yet, I'll hold off until next week, and then uh, hopefully have. We, yeah, I mean the, the results from one test uh, contradicted the test from uh, the second test. So uh, huh. I want to give it a bit more time. Um, Is that what we were talking yesterday? Yes, uh, Eva, and so there is no not much context, but for some reason the second test had had a baseline of uh, reads over twenty three percent, twenty five percent, and our actual baseline is nineteen point five percent people who land on a product landing page and then read an article. So I need to look into why the baseline jumped uh, to twenty five percent. That was unexpected. Um, yes, yeah, so I don't want to. Uh, I want to hold off another week okay. uh, and then present the report on that. Cool. All right. Um, well, let's see. Related questions is sort of related to hot questions, hot threads, um, in that we added this feature to the article pages. And um, we really haven't measured if, uh, if, they, if they're helpful. Um, and I thought. Uh, maybe we should do that and maybe while we're at it we could evaluate the related articles thing too um, are people clicking in that on that stuff in the sidebar it pushes the navigation down um, is it they super are. helpful yes they're clicking actually, on it but I actually checked that okay and there it's it's surprisingly uh, used uh, but it's really used in some articles and heavily used in some articles and not that used in others. Uh, so basically, it's important to do it and to do it right. So 
long story short, if you do it correctly, if you do related articles in a good way, it has a lot of value for the user. They, they will engage with that. But if you don't nail it, people just don't, don't care. Click on it. And Ibai, that... Did you also look into uh, how they voted after um, clicking on one of the yeah. related? No. Uh, yeah, I was going to Maybe that's a follow-up. That, that would be, I think, a good follow-up on, uh, on that. Like, what, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's not that hard. Because if people are clicking through, but then they they uh, rate those articles that they click through unhelpful more than helpful, then maybe it's not good to have them click through. Right. Um, also, we just changed related articles, the way they work, and uh, we they just should related, be more articles. related now. <laughs> They should be more related now. So they're only by product, right. which, by the way, which... It was super, super obvious on uh, the new WebMaker uh, uh, articles because the WebMaker articles had like just random things related to them. And now when you go to a WebMaker article, other WebMaker topics are like related to them. It makes so much more and, sense. Yeah, awesome. And Michael, uh, I'm curious to see your meta commentary on the WebMaker articles. Because they're awesome, but I think the titles need a like what I would call verdeization. Oh, yeah. There's there's a bunch. I mean, the the main idea was just to get them started. Yeah. No, they did a great start. I talked to them in Toronto. Cool. Um, okay. So, anything else on related questions, related articles, hot questions, all of that? Uh, did, did, uh, Eva, you mentioned that you checked uh, related articles. Uh, did you also look into mm -hmm. related threads or uh, related uh, questions? No, I was just, so the, the goal, the whole goal when I did that analysis was to check if that box was being used at all. Oh, okay. So, so it, should, it is. So it should be an action item for me uh, to follow up on that then um, on the uh, helpfulness of those who click through and the related uh, questions, whether they are being used or not. Yeah, that's a, that's a good option. Okay, I'm writing write this down. down. Oh, yeah. or, here, or write it down, Kadir. <laughs> I started to write it under actions and decisions. Uh, uh, that? At the bottom of the etherpad. I'm on the wrong unit. <laughs> ah, here. You got, do you have it? You want me to paste the link? Yeah, no, I have it. Okay. Okay. Um, mobile and desktop. So this, this has come up a couple of times, uh, most recently uh, last week. So there was a bug, the backstory is, there was a bug I filed a million years ago. It might have even <laughs> been before we had... Uh, it was definitely before we had this version, mobile version of Sumo. It might have been, well, we still had an other version of Sumo for mobile, but um, about the display of images. And I didn't specify desktop or mobile. And it was fixed only for, for the desktop version of the site. I didn't specify whether it was a problem on mobile or because, I, I, again, it was originally filed like a million years ago. Um, but Scooby Diver pointed out in the comments that, hey, this wasn't fixed on mobile. There was a back and forth. Ricky was like, well, it wasn't, it wasn't said that it needed to be fixed on mobile. Scooby argued it was implicit. And I'm just thinking whether it, whether it is stated in the bug or not, we probably need some mechanism to make sure that we consider both use, use cases, even if the original poster didn't. Hopefully the person like me posting, filing the bug um, is specific enough. Like this is a bug on both mobile and desktop and should be fixed in both places, right? But if they're not, we need a way to like catch the things that fall through the cracks, right? And make sure that mm -hmm. both use, use cases are considered and if necessary fixed. 
don't know what how to do that. So I just thought I'd throw that out here for discussion. That sounds like a thing for Ricky and Kadir and you guys. I have no idea what would work. Yeah, I mean, th this is an interesting case. Uh, the thing is that not every bug necessarily needs to have right. a mobile equivalent. Right. Um, especially if it's in the back end, it's just in the back end. Um, and yeah, I, I, I don't. Something needs to be. I don't necessarily have a good answer to this. So essentially, this is just about uh, being diligent. Like when you file the bug, making sure that um, both cases are checked. Um, and then putting it into the box so that, that developers can actually uh, follow up on that. Um, I should be the one who is also, um, so usually when we put things into uh, sprints, we also check the validity of um, the, um, of the bug. Um, so maybe this is also on me just to make sure that, that I check whether it's an issue, like in the mobile case, uh, sorry, in the image case that you mentioned, actually I fixed uh, the bug but even I, I, like, I didn't think about checking it on mobile. It didn't even occur to me that it might be the same problem might be on mobile. Um, didn't even occur to me. So maybe this is just a change of mindset. Like, going forward, yeah. mobile is always uh, important. Like, I'm not sure whether we should go mobile first with uh, considering our user base, um, but it should definitely be at least on the same level. Um, and so far, I'm actually pretty sure that we had, didn't have that mindset. So maybe it's time to change our, um, yeah, our view on things. Can't we just add a whiteboard thing for mobile needed if we agree it's mobile? I, I would say that's, that, that will be one approach, but I would rather not. Uh, first, okay. we have already so many whiteboard tags uh, that it gets unwieldy. But also, mobile, mobile should actually be implicit going forward. Like uh, the bugs that we're looking at, we should be making sure that, that we specify in the bug that it's also uh, a mobile issue that needs to be taken care of. Um, going forward, I can make sure that I check those things, but I would very much welcome help uh, in making sure that it's happening. I mean, in that regard, actually, um, uh, Scooby is great. Because he's doing that very often already. Right. I mean, maybe it's an education issue. Maybe we need to blog about it. We need to post stuff in the contributor forums about if you're filing bugs. Um, you know, specify whether this is both desktop and mobile or not, or at least ask the question in the bug. Like, I see this as a problem on desktop. I wasn't able to check it on mobile. You know, a reminder in the bug to check it. Oh yeah, that's a good point. I can, uh, yeah, I should totally do that in the discussion in the in the community discussions forum. But I'll also going forward in the bugs, I can make sure that I let people know that please also check this. Uh, like even if I can't personally check it, right. I'll ask people threats uh, the the bug starters, yeah. the bug right. filers to do this. So we should let's put that as an action item to. Um to uh, we'll post in the community, in the contributor threads, the blog, and the Monday meeting, right? Yeah. Yeah, you don't want to use a whiteboard. But whatever you tell us to use, we'll use. Good here. Essentially, it's just uh, not noting it in the back. Like, uh, when you note it in the back, this is uh, an issue it. on desktop and mobile. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll flush that out. Or maybe, Ricky, I, I, I was talking the whole time and didn't even <laughs> uh, get, let, let you uh, comment on it. So if you have a different idea, Ricky. Okay. Uh, I prefer more. I prefer it to be explicit. Um, that's my, uh, the, the more information you can give us, the better, right? Right. Explicit where, Ricky? Just in the, just in the description, or do you want a keyword or something? No, in the box. Okay. Because a, a style change, I will never assume that a style change is going to be for both sides because both sides have different styles. So you have to be explicit, right? So to not put undue onus on bug filers, especially if they're contributors, 
um, I think then the backup is be explicit that you didn't check the other use case or that it still yeah. needs to be checked. You might have just checked mobile and not right. desktop. Right. But yeah, I right. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, exactly. OK. Anything else about well, that? We could use more. P oh, more. Go yeah, ahead. I would love to have more Scoobies. I would love to have more Scoobies to go through bugs and uh, test things. In... You rock, man. But wow, you have an awesome job or something life that allows you to make work so much for us. Thank you. Scooby is awesome. Yeah. And I... yeah, if more people want to take this up, this is a great way to Does help. Does somebody hug him for me in Brussels? Is it a him? Is he coming to Brussels? No. He's French, right? He's not coming. Uh, yeah. or, we don't know. What, what, why don't we invite Morning, him? You know. we, make a <laughs> we make this this part of the video so we can send him the, the little thing. Scooby, come to Brussels. <laughs> One. Two. Crash the party. Yes. Scooby, come to Brussels. Crash the party. Somebody will be there. We can talk. <laughs> Scooby, please come to Brussels. Everyone's inviting you. So yeah, if anyone wants to uh, step into the footsteps of uh, a Scooby, it's incredibly helpful having people who verify things, uh, be it bugs, be it bug fixes. It's incredibly helpful. It takes a lot of time. Um, so having someone uh, help me with that is incredibly, incredibly useful. Mm -hmm. So right, yeah, one, one more way to contribute. Back. You don't need a computer science background or a health background. You just know how to follow yeah. a recipe and re try to reproduce the bug. Yep. It's awesome. OK. Yes, especially if the person's included steps for reproducing, which is another good thing when you're filing a bug. Hard, oh, yeah. to, hard to always remember, but steps for reproducing. Um, all right. Top articles. Let's talk about top articles. So I wrote a big bunch of stuff here uh, about top articles, but um, we kind of have, we sort of have like multiple definitions of, of uh, top articles. Um, and, and we created this idea for, for a number of different reasons, right? So um, we have this thing on our article review guidelines where we say we we have this notion of top articles. Right now, it's defined as anything with over 64,000 visits a month, um, which, depending on the makeup of the, of the visits to articles, is anywhere from 20 to 35 articles. Right now, it's closer to 35. Um, and we say that um, these are like, we're going to, we freeze these articles. So, um, we don't mark changes to them ready for localization, um, but except every six weeks so that localizers, we say these are important articles and we're not going to change them like crazy on you, uh, only if it's necessary because we made a mistake or something super important comes up. So that's one sort of top article, right? Um, um, we've we kind of have this definition of like a starter set of articles as like the top 20 articles because generally the top 20 articles covers like 50% of the traffic to articles, which is still true. Um, we measure our localization coverage by, by measuring the top 50 articles by visit. Um, and like I said, we protect somewhere 20 to 35 articles, right, from being, oh, uh, we also have this thing about when you're changing one of those top articles, um, unless you're updating existing information, um, that you can, like, if you're a reviewer, you can change and review yourself. But if you're, like, deleting sections, adding new sections, changing the instructions, uh, things like that, then you, we need to have a discussion about it so that, um, by policy, people can't just go in and, you know, take one of our most viewed articles and just change the whole thing uh, on their own kind of deal, right? So, so we have all these sort of uses and definitions about top articles, but one of the things that's always been a problem is um, we have Firefox, which has so many more users than any other uh, of our products, right? So, um, um, you know. 
Firefox for Android, you can like, you know, take off a, a zero or two and, and then you have like, you know, the amount of users and, and then take off some more zeros and then you have Firefox OS, right? Which is just barely, you know, launching in just a few countries. So um, uh, it's hard to, to have any sort of top articles based on popularity for those. We now have nice fixes on dashboards to separate things by product. Um, and I've been thinking maybe we ought to have a definition of like some sort of more steady definition of what a top article is and maybe define them for um, other products like Android and Firefox OS. It might be too early for Firefox OS because we don't have an, a, enough uh, feedback from users yet. But uh, anyway, just throw that out there for discussion. Um, um, just some data points. I went looking through, this was about two weeks ago, I went looking through the top 35 articles on desktop account for about 65% of the views to desktop articles. The top 12 of Android articles, if you remove the sync, the shared sync articles, not all the sync articles, the ones that are shared with desktop that are already included in the desktop top articles, um, there's like 12 Android articles that account for about 65%. There might even be some ways to consolidate some of those articles and make it like 10. But um, And then Firefox OS, there's like two mega articles that somewhere I've already suggested that they be moved to the administration category because they're not really for users, they're for the OBs, but because they're like mega lists of all the articles. Um, those two get the most views because it's kind of like people helping and preparing uh, training and stuff like that, viewing them. Um, but if you take those out of the list, there's like 18 articles that account for like 65% of the views. There's already sort of that hockey stick long tail shape to the views to the Firefox OS articles. Um, not that 65% has to be the cutoff or some certain amount of articles. Maybe this is something to discuss during our uh, work week, but um, like open questions. So should Android and Firefox OS each have a set of top articles, things that we think of as like protected in that, like there's a top article freeze for them, for localizers, that we encourage localizers to, to, um, to localize these as part of having a complete set of documentation, you know? So it's not just the top 20 or whatever desktop articles that when you are localizing support articles, it includes desktop articles, Android articles, Firefox OS articles, like as a minimum viable set of articles. Um, you know, should we calculate L to N coverage base for each product? All these kinds, kinds of things. And I've been talking for like five minutes now, but to explain the backstory on this, which goes back for a while, but um, I just wanted to see what people thought. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> kind of makes sense. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And yes, we should have a definition of top articles and it should be different for each product. Yes, and um, I think that's great. And especially for localizers, what we need to do um, in the future is we need to make it possible for people to own a certain product and to just, you know, receive notifications for that product. Um, or sign because, up for that product. Yeah, using a because we can actually try to have people who, who take on responsibility for a certain thing. And that, that might help us um, actually stay on top of things. Because one, one of the things that I've been hearing all the time from localizers is that uh, it feels that's too much to do. Um, yeah. So everyone's very overwhelmed. And that actually demotivates people because it seems like this huge thing that you cannot do on your, on your own. So, you know, kind of like if, if you put it in, in different parts, that, that kind of help. And that, that will also help. Is, um, um, like Polish, one person could say, I only want to know about L10N stuff for Android, or I only want to know about L10N stuff for desktop. Is that what you mean? Yeah, or just get the notifications. It's it. I mean, like yeah. that person can still help on the other things. Of course, but, um, I want them to help at the same time, but yeah. Exactly, exactly. So that that's a thing that you know could help us because right now the feeling of being overwhelmed um, 
by updates and changes in the articles. Uh, that's mm -hmm. something that a lot of uh, localizers have shared. So. So one one thing on that on the overwhelm though is I worry that it may actually make a bigger list of articles that a locale is kind of responsible for. You know, um, it would be like broadening the, the the list of like top articles from you know twenty to thirty five to upwards of fifty or sixty um, because because we're saying. Hey, these Android articles, even though they only get oh, you know no, five thousand uh, visits, those are important. Or these Firefox Ma Michael, OS sorry. articles. Sorry, Michael. Uh, I'm actually on the same page with you. I, okay. I don't want to. I don't want to make more. I, I, I'm, I totally agree with you that if we for Android, if we can, you know, go along with just ten or you know, or the five articles, you know, in the top articles, I think we should go for that. Um, I'm not saying that we should like add uh, like 60 top articles. Uh, not at all. I think I agree with you. I'm just saying that you know we could have these things in the product so that it's easier for people to track. But I'm totally with you. I, I think that if we can consolidate the list of top articles for the other products, that would make uh, that would be like really awesome. Yes. Yeah, so both the ability to see on a per product or get notification on a per product basis, if possible, and also a list of top articles for all products so that has a consistent. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I guess this is what I'm, I'm thinking, though, uh, about the number of articles for, for the other, other products. So, for instance, if, um, if you say, like, it, uh, on Android, five, the top five articles, maybe, I, I don't know without looking, right? Maybe that's only, like, 25% uh, of, the, of the visits. Is that meaningful? To, to say that, you know, hey, if you do these top five, that's good. I mean, is that really meaningful if that means like 75% of the Android documentation is like, is, you know, not localized um, kind of thing? I mean, on desktop, we would say no. We would say localizing 25%, that's good, but it's not, it's just a start, you know? There's another component that, Per locale, uh, the top articles are different. Like lo uh, languages like Spanish and and some others that were fully localized. I did this a year and a half ago, so it could have changed. But basically, the top twenty, there were like only only ten of them were common with English. The other ten were different. So. For example, Germans are really paranoid about privacy and, and security. So everything that is related to that, it's I'm important I wouldn't to say I wouldn't say paranoid. I would say realistic. <laughs> OK. <let's... laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it turns out their paranoia is justified. It's so yeah. easy to <laughs> just to throw Just because throw you're paranoid, it doesn't mean that you're it. not being followed. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> But then there, there were, uh, uh, Brazil was fairly different too. Uh, so the thing is that it, it seems that each region has a little bit of a different usage of the product and they care uh, about different things. So for example, sync articles, some of them are fairly popular, but I'm guessing that they are not really popular in countries where the smartphone penetration is not high. Uh, and so on and so forth. So that's that's the other thing to keep in mind. The trouble with that is that if articles are not localized, you don't know what their um, placement might be. Right. Yeah. I, uh, but the thing is that I did this with with languages that were almost fully localized uh, or right, fully right. localized to to avoid that bias. No, that's true. I mean, as a recommendation, it's hard to give recommendations because. Well, if it's not localized, you don't know you don't what, know. if it was localized, what that placement would be. You can't say to, like, let's say in Polish, you can't say the Polish one should localize this article because it will be in the top 20 once it is localized before, because before it is localized, it will not be in the top 20 anyway. Right. right. Also, I would expect... It's really the, hard. That, that is a hard problem. Like, how to overcome. I would expect the fire... For the top 20. Oh, sorry. I don't know if this... My thing is so delayed, y'all. This video is going to look bizarre, so I'm sorry if I'm talking over you. Um, it also, I expect 
the other thing about this is I, I don't know how we can even do this really for Firefox OS because the English visits are, are either due to, you know, confused uh, users or it's contributors. And, and yeah. the real place to look for users using it has got to be one of the, the locales where the phone has been uh, released, right? So, uh, uh, <laughs> I'm not quite sure it's even possible or, or what to do there. Yeah, we would have to take, like English is, um, it kind of makes sense to take English as the baseline because it's uh, spoken by 50% at least of the user base. But if you look at the small languages, like the ones that have Firefox OS usage, none of them has more than 5% of our user base. Uh, so taking any of them is, like, you can't, like, you can't decide which one to take, Spanish, Portuguese. Well, well for uh, Firefox Polish. OS, maybe Spanish is is fifty percent or more of the user base for Firefox OS. Actually, yes, no. you're right. Of course, for but, yeah. But then, you, but then you're yeah. in the problem that you just described earlier, where you have to localize them all and then see which ones become the top articles. Right. Yeah. And then you could make that recommendation to another language. And hopefully that will work, <laughs> but then there might be differences. Yeah, one way to go about this uh, would be to, so like when you do the tree jack thing, for example, we want to know whether your um, uh, information architecture is working or not. Uh, one of the ways to do it is to figure out what are the main tasks on your page? Uh, what are the uh, most common uh, tasks? And then you go test that with the users. And you get those tasks uh, also by uh, looking at searches. So you can look at common searches and figure out what are the top 10, top 20 tasks that people are trying to accomplish. And then you can tell uh, the Spanish community, for example, um, these are the top 20 articles that would cover most of these searches. It would be one way to go. It's totally imperfect. Um, it might be one way to go about that, though. It's definitely better than using the English uh, data because that's, yeah, like you said, not from Firefox OS users. Or at least there might be developer users, but not from end user users. And then there is another, but, another component that is the main question of that probably the top 18 articles of Firefox OS right now are they have as many visits as the article in position 26 in in desktop right right oh probably not probably article in position 50 or something and that's that's something also keep in mind what what do prioritize I right. think we need an even path and well, a discussion at our work week. Well, that's always, see, that's always been the problem. It, it's always been the problem before Firefox OS. It, that was the problem uh, with Android. So e Android. even if Android was released in your locale, the, the, the difference in the amount of users is so vast that it's like, why localize any of them? Right. That's the reason why we came up with different dashboards because the Firefox and for Android articles they would just go under like you wouldn't even see them anywhere on the list. Right. They were down there like in the hundred fifties, two hundreds. So, so um, I guess maybe part of this is like saying, um, I mean, I I guess you know always it's going to be up to it's going to be up to the the locale team about what they prioritize and, and what they what they think is worth their their time to to work on. But it could be in the terms of like suggesting, um, you know, if you want to have a good you want to have a good set of desktop documentation, here's mm -hmm. the place to start. We also suggest that you that you have a good set of Android documentation and here's the place to start these articles. And we also suggest that you have a good set of, of Firefox OS 
uh, documentation, and here are the articles. Or in this locale, and then we don't have any current plans for Firefox OS, so don't even do those. Or, and WebMaker. <laughs> Sync and White Marketplace. Don't we love it? We're so great. We're taking over everything. Well, Sync is already accounted for in the desktop and, and Android articles, but yeah. yeah. I know, but it's a weird beast. And Marketplace will kind of be taken care of and Persona in the, in the Firefox OS articles right now. Maybe at some point. <laughs> I guess my point is that, that we will have this problem again. We'll always have this problem. We'll solve it now, which we should, and then we'll have to solve another one later. It's not a, there's no easy answer, I think. Yeah, I think no. we need to have a follow-up discussion maybe a, at the work week. Yeah. And put our thoughts in an ether pad for everyone to help out with. Yeah. Or at least the beginnings. It just feels like a on, it's, it'll be an ongoing thing to be, to be working on. Because also, whatever you determine changes. Right when you say yep. these are the top articles every quarter, They're probably change. once or twice a quarter. Next year, Firefox OS is the most important product. Could be. They're all important. I mean, cr crossing. Crossing. sorry, I mean, uh, I meant the product with the most users. The most users, right? Next oh. year. I mean, crossing my, our fingers. Yeah. Could be, or it could be totally more than Android. Yeah. In normal circumstances, we should have more users than in Android. Yeah. I, I was surprised. We already have, um, what was the ADI? Yeah. Large ADI for, for Android. Incredibly large ADI. Yeah. OK. All right. So we'll con so, continue. We'll con <laughs> Continue thinking about. I mean, there's good things here. I'll, I'll go back through the video and try to add some of those ideas to the Etherpad. Okay. To yeah. The notes. All right. Anything else? No. Not at all. What? Wow, this was a full discussion. Uh, I've been on vacation. Things to... I have, I'm overwhelmed by my email, so I have nothing else to add other than my bombast. <laughs> Loud voice. All right. Well, let's call it a meeting. OK. All right. Talk to you guys later. Have Ciao, fun, guys. Au revoir. Bye. 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 Bye.